Want to learn how to design a room the way the cinema does? Watch this. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Cinematically Inspired Design, where we take the design secrets from the cinema and bring them into your homes. This is part three of a three-part series where we explore how to design a room just like the cinema does using the concept of storyboards. In part one, we explored the process of gathering information, focusing on the various things that resonate with you, those items that have feelings, memories, or moods attached to them things you might not even ordinarily think of as having anything to do with design. In part two, we analyzed, categorized, and edited that information. We whittled it down to the absolute essentials, right down to the very essence of what makes up your particular and unique design style. Now in part three, we take all of that information and actually apply it to a real life room using the design principles and techniques found in the cinema as our guide. You'll be shown a before and after room transformation using the storyboard method. Let's get started. What are the eight principles of cinematically inspired design? I'll demonstrate using examples from, no surprise here, the cinema. So why do I take us to the cinema when teaching design principles? Because they are the certified masters at the exact thing you are trying to accomplish in your home. Meaning, creating a mood and telling the story of the people who live there. Think about it. There is a reason we fall in love with the classic homes from the cinema. They have about two hours to tell us everything we need to know about the characters and to create a mood. So they've been forced to develop the principles and tools that allow them to condense down the design to the most essential basics and to present them in the way that has the greatest impact on the viewer. Make no mistake, this type of design is a true art form. There are feelings generated through design that are similar to those created through art, music, dance, or literature. And you can learn to create the feelings or mood that you want in your home, just like the cinematic masters do. Now, on to the eight principles of cinematically inspired design. Spatial use. A few of the concepts here include utilizing different levels, scale, wide hallways, and defining spaces. Layout. This deals with, among other things, floor plan, flow, and adjacent spaces seen from the room. Materials. Here we focus on things like how to best use materials to your advantage. Color. Some of these concepts are color beyond, color saturation, color dispersion, using colors to create certain moods, using warm versus cool tones. Outside the box. Our cinematic tutors are masters at thinking outside the box in their designs, in everything from adding lighting for drama to incorporating outdoor views into the interior design. All concepts we can take into our own homes. Furnishings. Learn the how and why of choosing particular pieces and what effect that has on a room. Architectural features. The cinema uses architecture to define spaces, to add character, to add drama, and to define or showcase a particular design style. And last, metaphor. Here's a principle that you might not have expected to be associated with design, but the cinema frequently uses metaphor to help convey a deeper message or to better flesh out a character or a storyline. Why not do the same in your home? Now, let's actually transform a room using the principles we've learned in parts one, two, and now part three. 
Here is the room before our transformation. These things will not change in this remodel. The stone fireplace, only the mantle will change. The wall color. The flooring will stay, but will get restained. The golden orangey color will become a thing of the past. The windows and floor plan will remain the same, as will the coffee table and end tables. Otherwise, Let's get rid of everything else and start with a blank slate. Here is the storyboard I created as the inspiration for this room. First, a reminder of my concept of a storyboard. A storyboard is different than a regular design board. This was discussed extensively in parts 1 and 2. You'll want to watch or re-watch those episodes if you're unfamiliar with this part. In a nutshell, a storyboard is composed of groupings of items that reliably produce feelings, moods, or memories to which you are attached and that help you tell your own unique design story. It's named after a process used in the cinema to create the mood of the film and help tell the story of the characters through design. It helps convey the tone of the film and often the color palettes to be used. In the cinema, it depicts important scenes from the film. Now, obviously, you won't be drawing upon scenes from your life, but you will be using the same process. In other words, a little detective work to figure out how best to tell your story through design and create the tone of your home and the specific mood you want there. I recently interviewed Bill Brzezewski, an art director and production designer with an impressive resume of both TV and movie work. In fact, he's currently in London working on Aquaman 2. I asked him to walk us through the process from when he is first given a project, knowing little or nothing of the characters, until the end result when he feels like he has a home that represents those people. Listen as he talks about how he does the detective work to unravel their story and then depict that through design. You actually kind of have to learn who your client is or what your story is. And it's, it's your basic storytelling. So when you read a script, there's a story there. I did the movie as good as it gets. You can think of that movie. There's a story there. And then you start to look at what happens in the story and you can start to unravel it and you can unravel people's characters and you have talks with the director and to get the job, you go in and you've read the script and you broke down the characters and who they are, how old they are, where they might live, what kind of house they live in. What is their life like, you know? You are like the production designer of your home. You know your story better than anyone. It just might take a little of your own detective work to get your storyboard going. Let's now apply this method to a room. In the last episode, part two, we examined these images from a storyboard and found the properties they held in common. Now, in part three, I'm going to show you how I chose to incorporate these elements into the design. I brought in the watercolor feeling with the two Van Gogh paintings, the rug, the painting over the fireplace, and a small painting in the hutch. The abundance of blues and greens are everywhere. It shows up in the pillows, chairs, curtains, the sideboard, the plants, and the ceramics. And of course, most naturally in the outdoors, which can be seen from almost every angle in the room because of the large windows. There are a variety of different woods as seen in the mantel, and paneling, the side table, the coffee table, and the set of end tables. The color and grain of a walnut shell, as seen in the original storyboard, is brought in with a new stain that was applied to the oak flooring. Gilded features make their appearance in the mirror, the frame of the painting over the fireplace, in the light fixtures, and in a small clock in the hutch. Small amounts of a rosy salmon color were sprinkled around the room in the ceramics on the coffee table, in one of the paintings, in the rug, and also some books inside the hutch. And finally, the leather was brought in in the two sofas. 
As we discussed in parts one and two, you can have all the right ingredients, but you still need to apply the correct principles and techniques to have success. The same is true with design. We have our ingredients, now we just need to follow the recipe. That means using the eight design principles I referred to earlier. So let's take those elements from our storyboard and combine them artfully with design principles. If you do that, and concentrate on creating the mood and feeling you want in your home, it will produce timelessness. Now let's cover a few of these principles as I applied them here today in this room. Spatial use. Scale matters. In fact, scale can transform a room. I have an entire episode dedicated to this principle with before and after examples. In the room we're working on today, the size of the paintings, the rug, and the coffee table are all substantial. Another change that helped with this room was getting rid of the large armoire and replacing it with a painting and small sideboard. It added visual space to the wall. It no longer feels hefty, but is now more open and lighter. Color. This is a big one, and the cinnamon knows that well. Some of the principles of color taught in earlier episodes on this channel include color beyond, color saturation, and color dispersion. Here's an example of color beyond, which is the idea that the colors you can see from one room can also play a part of the design scheme of the room you're currently standing in. They draw your eye out and make the room beyond seem like part of the room you're in. In this scenario, we see the use of color beyond here, with the deep blue and green colors found in the kitchen helping to reinforce the color scheme in the living room. We also see it play out here, with the items placed outside on the deck and patio becoming an extension of the living room itself. What is outside a window is also part of the design, whether you like it or not. So you might as well purposely use it to your advantage. Deeply saturated colors were brought in in measure. The deep peridot green nestles up against the brown leather sofa and is also seen nearby in a pot on the deck. A deep orange is found in this blanket and repeated again in the pillows outside and in the large planter on the patio, all of which can be seen from the living room. Architectural features. The addition of library style paneling on either side of the fireplace adds interest, drama, and warmth all at the same time. Before the addition of the paneling, the walls seemed rather bare. Now the room feels more complete, which by the way is what our end goal is, that a room feels complete, similar to the cinema creating an ending that feels right. And lastly, metaphor. The cinema is more than fond of using metaphor. Metaphor reaches us at a different level. It connects with a different and often subconscious part of our brains. It can be powerful when used right. In this instance, I chose a painting by Arthur Clifton Goodwin titled Strand Theater. The reason? Since this is a show all about the magic of design in the cinema, this painting depicts a spotlight on the actors, and yet the real scene stealer is what's going on in the background. Now that you know some of the different components of the room and the principles at play, let's take a tour.
Join me in future episodes as we continue this journey of learning how to tell your story through design and creating the mood you want in your home and in the process, making it timeless. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. See you next time on Cinematically Inspired Design.